morning and welcome to worship at Lake Nokomis Lutheran Church. I am Pastor Sarah Spohr and I'm so glad that you have joined us today. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter. We are uh, celebrating again and again and again the risen Christ. Alleluia is our refrain. So today uh, we are continuing in this sermon series on our questions and each of the texts that we are reading in this series has a question in it. And today's question is asked by the Pharisees. They wonder, why should we listen to Jesus? And so we're going to ask that question. Who do you listen to? And uh, why should the one you listen to be Jesus? So as we move into that, there are several announcements for you in the week ahead. I want to remind you, and this is with great excitement, that next Sunday, May 2nd, we are going to begin outdoor worship, and we are going to be meeting in the courtyard in front of our school on 50th Street, so you can find a place to park, bring your lawn chair and your mask, and we're going to be gathering outside for worship. And under our masks, we will sing and we will pray together. Uh, we will receive Holy Communion and it will just be good to look one another in the eye and proclaim that Christ is risen. So we hope you will join us. If you are not able to or not ready to join us in person outside, then um, our worship service will be available online. It will, it will be recorded at the outdoor worship and then online shortly after. And then we are hoping to be able to live stream very soon so you can be present with us during the moments of worship. Today, uh, I want to remind you of our youth fundraiser that is happening right now. You can find more information about that on our website, but essentially we want to support and send our kids off to summer experiences that help them grow in their faith in God and their connection to the community of Christ. So we hope that you will participate in that. Uh, there's much more to share. Uh, you'll find that in our e-news. If you are not currently signed up for our e-news, you can do that on our website and you'll get a weekly update on all the things, the Zoom links you might need that are happening here at Lake Nicomas Lutheran. So today in our worship, we are receiving Holy Communion. And so you can just pause your video if you're not prepared already and gather together bread and wine, maybe a candle to be reminded of the presence of Christ in this sacred moment. So we are here to worship, to breathe in Christ, to hear the word of Christ, to be reminded that we live in empowered by our God and drawn in to the fold by the good shepherd. So let us worship. of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh Shepherd me, O oh God, my wants beyond my fears from death to Shepherd me. 
feels are beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from dead to life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred, crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, oh shepherd me beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death to life. Beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. With humility and the promise of God's grace, let us join together in this time of confession and forgiveness. Christ has risen, and we have new life in him. Yet we must confess the ways that we have continued to live in the way of sin and death. Let us pray. Living Lord, when we stand before the empty tomb, we don't always feel the joy of the resurrection. We feel fear, doubt, and distrust. We feel empty. Forgive the fear that paralyzes us at the brink of new life. Forgive our doubts of your love. Forgive our distrust of your surprising, joyous plan. Fill our emptiness with your glorious light. Raise us to abundant new life, all for the glory of your name. And now hear this good news. Rise up this day. Let the light of Christ shine in you. Friends, Christ has forgiven your sins. Christ calls you to new life. Christ will lead your way home. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. O Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your keeping. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be well. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Hello, friends. This is our last story time together here in our pre-recorded worship because next week we're going to be live and in person. I'm excited and happy that I've been able to share stories with you for these last many, many months. Today's story is one where Jesus compares himself to a shepherd and us to sheep. Jesus says that he is the good shepherd and we are like sheep. Have you ever thought of yourself like a sheep before? And do you know very much about sheep? So some things about sheep. Um, sheep follow their shepherd. Their shepherd is like their caretaker. They follow what the shepherd says. They know the sound of the shepherd's voice and they will follow that shepherd. And without the shepherd, the sheep can be very vulnerable. They can be attacked by other animals and they get lost really easily. And if they fall down, sometimes it's really hard for them to get back up again. So they really need their shepherd to take care of them and to provide food for them and watch over them. And did you know that if you do not shave the wool off of a sheep, it will just keep growing and growing and growing and growing until it's so long and heavy that the sheep can hardly walk. 
So they have to have a shepherd to care for them. So I want to share this story with you about um, a sheep that is lost and the shepherd comes to find that sheep. And remember that you are like that sheep, that you need the shepherd to come after you and to care for you. And so here's the story. Jesus wanted people to know that he would always love them and take care of them. He called himself the good shepherd and told people that they were like sheep. Some people didn't understand. And so Jesus told them this story. The little lamb was lost. Bah, said the little lamb. Bah, the sun slowly slid out of sight. The little lamb shivered in the cold night air. Bah, he smelled danger. Nearby, a hungry wolf hid behind a thorny bush. Bah, cried the little lamb. Bah. Down in the valley, a shepherd guarded his flock of sheep, watching and listening. The animals slept peacefully in the cool, green grass. A small stream delicately danced in the evening breeze, and a gust of wind swept across the valley. The shepherd paused. Bah! he heard in the distance. Bah! He knew the voice of his little lamb. Even though it was dark, the shepherd started up the rocky path that led towards the lost lamb. Don't be afraid, the shepherd called out. I will find you. I will keep you safe. The little lamb heard the shepherd's voice. Slowly, he stumbled down the path. A branch scraped his leg. Bah! He cried. The little lamb was scared. He waited for the shepherd to find him. Bah! He cried. Bah! When the shepherd reached the lamb, he gently picked him up and held him close. There you are, said the shepherd. I have found you. I will carry you home. After he told this story, Jesus said, See? I am a shepherd too. Just like the good shepherd cares for each and every sheep in the flock, I care for each and every one of you. So whatever happens to you this week, for the rest of this week, remember that God cares for you and loves you and would come chasing after you if you were lost. God always wants to be near you. And I care for you too. I'm glad to know you and I'm glad to share stories with you. Let's pray today about Jesus, our good shepherd. Please pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for our shepherd, Jesus. We know he is good and we know he loves us. And we thank you for that great, big love. And all of God's children said, Amen. I love you. And I hope you have a great week. And next Sunday, I hope to see you in person at church. Have a great week. Bye-bye. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. 
I have received this command from my Father. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator, from our Savior Jesus the Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, the one who is present wherever you are. So our question for today is, who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? In a very literal sense, I'll tell you that the first album I ever purchased was Millie Vanilli. Now, I should probably be wildly embarrassed to admit that to you, but I did. I saved my babysitting dollars, I headed on down to Pomida, and I purchased the cassette tape of Girl, You Know It's True. Not long after that memorable purchase, the scandalous news came out that Millie Vanilli had been lip syncing. What heartbreak. So who do you listen to? How do you make your decisions? What is important to you? I suppose with music, we think about good lyrics and a particular style or a musician's technical ability. Or do you just maintain this very low bar of they should sing along with their own lips and their own vocal cords? My brother loves to listen to The Current on NPR because he's introduced to all these new artists um, that he discovers there. Personally, ever since Millie Vanilli, my two favorites have consistently been John Denver and Dolly Parton. I guess I just love that they're both singer-songwriters and they sing and write lyrics with both simplicity and depth. Now, you know this sermon isn't really about music preferences, is it? As we tackle these questions raised in our biblical stories during this sermon series, I'm particularly interested in the question that comes up just two verses after our uh, selected reading for today. Why listen to him? Why listen to him? The hymn is Jesus, of course. Now, we need some context here. In the Gospel of John, we are, have read a selection from chapter nine, but we're back, or 10, but we're backing up to chapter nine. In chapter nine, there is this story of a man born blind. So from birth, he was blind. Now, Jesus comes and Jesus heals this man, makes him to see again, and people want to know why. Specifically, the Pharisees, uh, the, these leaders of the synagogue, they want to know what happened and why. They are watching Jesus. They don't think he's following the rules. And so they are trying to figure out where they can catch him having gone wrong. So they go to this man's parents and they said, is this your son? And they, yep, this is our son. He was blind from birth. Tell us the story. How was he healed? How is this possible? Now, it says that these parents are afraid of being cast out of the temple. And so they do not answer. They say, well, he's an adult. Go ask him yourself. Go in out of their fear. They say, go ask him yourself. So the Pharisees go to the man and they say, well, did Jesus heal you? Were you blind from birth and now you can see? And the man, of course, is overjoyed with this healing. And so he says, yes, it was Jesus who healed me. I can see again. And he, what happens to him, is exactly what the parents had feared. He confirms that he has been healed by Jesus and he is driven out, cast out. He is driven out of the temple because he has listened to Jesus. He has trusted what Jesus has done for him. He could now see literally and metaphorically. He could see how Jesus is giving sight to one and all. He listened to Jesus and they kicked him out. Now Jesus goes out and finds him. Jesus goes out and finds him. Jesus affirms him and gives him the assurance that he belongs to God. Now, we cannot miss what is happening here. He listens to Jesus and he is kicked out. And Jesus draws him back in again. So now, go to chapter 10. This is the story that you have heard for today. 
It is a whole chapter where the metaphor is sheep and a shepherd, and specifically the good shepherd. Now, Jesus uses this metaphor to talk about what it means to belong to God. Jesus is the good shepherd. He protects the sheep. He feeds the sheep. He nurtures the sheep. He comforts the sheep. He goes out and finds the sheep when they have gotten themselves lost, when they have wandered away, or maybe even when they have been kicked out. Jesus tells us in this metaphor that the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. They listen and they return to the fold when they find belonging and relationship and abundant life. The sheep know the voice of the shepherd. This whole metaphor is told in direct response to what has happened to this formerly blind man Jesus means to say to these Pharisees and say it clearly that this is not the way with God to kick someone out of the temple. The Pharisees listen to this whole story that Jesus tells about the shepherd and the sheep. And with apparent disgust, they say this, why should we listen to him? Why should we listen to him? Well, it's a question that I think many people ask of Jesus today. Maybe not with the same kind of disgust, but maybe with. Why should we listen to him? A lot of people outside the church have seen some pretty inconsistent responses and actions taken by those who say they follow this good shepherd, this Jesus, and they remain skeptical at best or leave the church that bears his name altogether. How often, in the name of Jesus, have people been kicked out? How often, in the name of Jesus, have people been made to feel inferior or wrong, been told that they are awful sinners, been oppressed or mistreated? More often than we'd like to admit is the answer. Here we are as humans, and we like to divide and evaluate and categorize people. And there is Jesus who says, come on back, who's taking down the division, getting rid of the categories, drawing the sheep back into the fold. Jesus. Someone has said that if your faith causes you to draw a line between you and someone else, Jesus is probably on the other side of that line. So we go back to that question, who do you listen to? Jesus? I mean, is Jesus the voice that you listen to? What voices are helping you to understand the way of Jesus in your life? I mean, you and I both know we have access to so many voices today, so much information, an array of diverse opinions and contradictory facts, right? So who do you listen to? How do you decide who to listen to? I mean, the question is important for us as people of faith to be able to understand. It has implications for how we will live out our faith in our world. Is the information that we are taking in and then resharing with others consistent with Jesus, our Good Shepherd? I want to share kind of three thoughts on how we can filter and maybe make sense of the information that we are taking in and sending back out. So as we consider uh, who do we listen to, I, I think we might just ask these three questions. Is the voice we're listening to consistent with the Jesus we read in the Gospels? When Jesus walked on this earth, and we read about this in the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, when Jesus walked on the earth, he oozed compassion for all people. I mean, he offered grace and forgiveness liberally. He became upset when uh, people did things purely out of selfish gain. When people are insulted and belittled, 
it is probably not the voice of Jesus. When money is the key motivator, it is probably not the voice of Jesus. When something good is offered, but it has conditions or exclusions, it is probably not the voice of Jesus. So that first question, as we take in information, as we listen to the voices around us, is it consistent with the Jesus we find in the Gospels? The second question, does the faith community that I'm a part of affirm and trust that voice? Now, we aren't all going to believe all of the same things all of the time, and that's not what I'm uh, suggesting to you. But it is a good question to ask in general. I mean, the reason that we are in faith community is to encourage one another, to learn and grow in our faith, to check out the information that we are taking in. And so we ask ourselves, is this voice that is guiding me consistent with the values of the faith community around me? I mean, this is why it is so important for us to actually be together as a faith community. I mean, we need to check in with one another, lift up where we are seeing Jesus at work in the world around us, ask questions about why something seems to say it is from Jesus, but doesn't seem to be consistent with Jesus. We need to encourage one another in living authentically in the way of Jesus. Now, you and I both know that we can probably go out and find a faith community that says it is uh, in the way of Jesus, but isn't consistent with the Jesus of the Gospels, question number one. So those two have to be held together. So finally, I will say the third filter that we might have, and there might be many others, but these are the three I am lifting up today. Finally, I think we have to ask ourselves if this voice empowers me to live out the law of God. And we know that law is to love God and love neighbor. That, Jesus said, was the most important of the commandments, love God, love neighbor. And so when I listen for Jesus in my world or in my home or in my neighborhood or in my workplace or in my city, how am I being compelled to honor God and to serve my neighbor. I'm becoming increasingly concerned about this expectation that the the church of Jesus should provide a message that simply comforts people and makes me feel good about myself. That there shouldn't be too many expectations placed upon its membership. Because Jesus was constantly pushing his followers. Jesus set high expectations. Jesus demanded generosity. Jesus wanted his followers to become servants for the sake of the neighbor. So is the voice I'm hearing compelling me to use my life to honor God and serve my neighbor? So, you know, I like repetition. Back to the question, who do you listen to? Who do you listen to? Jesus says in John chapter 10 that the good shepherd cares for the sheep and that the sheep know the voice of their shepherd. The sheep know the voice of their shepherd. As we keep listening, as we stay connected with each other and with our Jesus, we too will grow more and more to know the unmistakable voice of love and grace and compassion of Jesus at work in our world. And you and I know that our world desperately needs to hear that voice. Now, finally, I wanna just say this, that when we think about the good shepherd, the one who continues to gather in the sheep, we can't help but lift up this very familiar Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 23. You know it, I'm sure. It begins with, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Two things about that psalm are very powerful to me in the midst of this uh, question of who should we listen to. The first is this, that the psalm makes this promise about God, that God will be near to us in the highs and lows of life. Uh, The words used in the psalm are, God is with us when our cup overfloweth, when our cup is running over and we are joyful, and that God is with us 
even in the valley of the shadow of death. So in the highest high of life and the lowest low of life, God is there with us. That's powerful to me. The second thing I want to say about the good shepherd that we come to know in Psalm uh, 23 is found in the very last verse where it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, the Hebrew word translated here as follow is woefully misinterpreted. That word follow should actually be translated as to chase or to pursue. Now, imagine how that psalm changes, right? Surely goodness and follow me. Uh, good, surely goodness and mercy will chase me all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy will, will pursue me all the days of my life. I mean, what if our faith told us, if the voices we listened to were such that goodness and mercy were pursuing us, chasing us down all the days of our life? Follow is quite passive. Chase or pursue feels like God's mercy and goodness is active in my life, advancing me, compelling me forward, ready to redirect me when I respond to the wrong voices. So who do you listen to? And why should we listen to Jesus? Because in this foot race of life we are in, we are told that mercy and goodness are going to chase you down. They're going to change your life. They are going to bring you into this beautiful belonging to Christ all the days of your life. To that, we can only respond, thanks be to God. Amen. And now, even with questions like, who do you follow and why should we listen, still on our hearts, we are able to proclaim uh, with the voices around us this statement of faith. I believe, in spite of many unanswered questions, I believe. I believe in the living God, the joy of the universe, who is the pulse and purpose of all things seen and unseen, who from the dust of the earth calls up living beings to be children of eternity, who through countless ages has provided for us the many liberators and tirelessly seeks to bring victory out of defeat and life out of decay. I believe in Jesus the Christ, God's true son, who is bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, who took upon himself the healing of the human race, who bearing the burden of our sins went to Golgotha carrying his cross, who was betrayed, crucified, dead, and buried in a borrowed tomb, who on the third day was found to be gloriously alive, meeting with those who trust in him and serve him to the end of the world. I believe in the Holy Spirit of God, within and among all who cherish Christ and his way, who brings us hope out of despair, love out of apathy, and joy out of sorrow, who unceasingly regenerates and reforms the church, that it may always be the contemporary body of the risen Christ, loving the world through prayer, word, and deed. I believe that even I am caught up in the resurgent life of Jesus Christ and that nothing in life or death can separate me from his love and joy in spite of unanswered questions. Yes, I believe. Amen. During this Easter season, we are able to celebrate the risen Christ and the ways that we see Christ alive and at work in our faith community, in our city, and in our world. And we give thanks in this past week for all of the ways that Christ is instilling hope and peace and joy among us. So we thank you for your generous gifts to this place. These gifts allow us together to proclaim God's word, to act and to serve in the name of the risen Savior. Together, we are the body of Christ at work in our world. 
And so uh, I give thanks to you and I remind you that you continue to make, you can con continue to make those contributions uh, by way of our website, uh, by mailing them to the church office or by uh, stopping by um, and with an appointment. And very soon as we gather in outdoor worship, you can actually put them in the offering plate and maybe that will feel really good. <laughs> So let us offer a prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God for the generous gifts of the people of God. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to be near to us in love and to hear us when we pray. Loving Spirit, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and the peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. We pray especially for those who have been marginalized, experienced hatred and discrimination, and all who long for an end to an oppressive and unjust systems. Help us love one another in both truth and action. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our faith community, our neighborhoods, and our city in our life together. Give us energy and vision as a people of faith. In the midst of both challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands, in the assurance of resurrection hope. We remember all who have died and all who grieve their loss. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to receive this meal of God's grace, we do so by leaning in to the words of Jesus' own mouth. As Jesus gathers with the disciples, he speaks these words to them that remind them that he will always be there for them. So listen again to the story you already know so well. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks for it. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks for it, he poured it out for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And now you are invited to receive this meal. Here we know that when it is given to you, when it is offered to you, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus, you can trust that it is the voice of Jesus. It is the one to whom you can listen. It is the one who offers this that draws you back again and again. So take and eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And then take and drink from the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And then receive this blessing as you eat and as you drink, as you receive this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, God proclaims to you that you are brought back, <laughs> that your sins are forgiven, your life is renewed, and you are empowered to be God's servants in this world. Amen. into the rest of your day, into the rest of your week, receive this blessing. May the good shepherd be your only teacher. May the good shepherd be the one you follow. May the good shepherd compel you to spread compassion to those who are far away, to speak for those who are voiceless, to defend those who are oppressed and abused to work for justice for all who have been exploited, to make peace for those who have suffered violence, to take the time to recognize how the Good Shepherd connects you, loves you, tells you that you belong. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.